So I used to organize music concerts and festivals because I figured if I organize the festival and the concert, uh, I'm sure to get booked because then I'm the booger. So I, I did that for a couple of years. And then one day I sort of like got tapped on the shoulder and uh, got asked, um, hey, you you do music festivals. Could you do like a festival, but just only with one guy on stage? More specifically, conferences about uh, this thing called virtual reality and its counterpart, augmented reality. So virtual reality is essentially goggles that you put on your face and you're in a different world. And when you experience it, it's very convincing and when I first got into virtual reality and with my background as, as a drummer, I, I thought uh, we could probably use this to create virtual concerts. The problem with concerts is sort of that you have somebody on stage and then you have the audience. So it's sort of like looking into a glass window. So I was thinking uh, you guys probably all experienced the feeling of being like in a what do you call it? Ulokale, uh, like when you when you rehearsal room. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, so couldn't we do that with just like these goggles to have the experience of actually being there to be like very close to the musicians? And uh, I, I I tried that out and uh, created some. Uh, you call it like three hundred and sixty videos. So instead of having a video where all of the pixels are like on a flat screen. Uh, in virtual reality, you would take all of the pixels and then map them on a sphere like around you. So when you're in the glasses, you can look around and you sort of get the sensation of being at a at a concert. But still, like there was the problem that not a lot of people have these glasses. So even though I myself thought I was creating some really cool uh, virtual reality concert experiences, almost no one was seeing them. Then I uh, sort of went to the counterpart to virtual reality, which I uh, said in the beginning is augmented reality. And while virtual reality is being in a completely immersive, different world, augmented reality is adding something to the world that we're already in. The, the, the feeling of adding something to the world can essentially be done in, in two ways. Uh, there's a very expensive sort of sci-fi way uh, that if if you guys have watched like Minority Report with Tom Cruise, he like has all of these interfaces like in front of him that he can move around. And, and you can get that by having like glasses that add a layer to the world. The problem is that these glasses cost like uh, like twenty to thirty thousand crowns a pair. So if you want to have a a concert experience or something and you have thirty people, that's expensive. Uh, so the solution to that is to still have this experience of adding something to the real world, but do it on a device that uh, everyone already has. So the next problem was obviously that you need people to have a uh, the sort of app. So the solution to that is to do it through websites, to the internet. And when I got to that realization and I found a guy who could write computer code because I can't. Uh, um, I found out that, okay, so if we can make the sensation of augmented reality and we can make it uh, on the smartphones that people already have, then we probably have like a medium, a way of delivering content to people. I took the liberty of creating uh, an, an AI experience with uh, this tool, which my company makes, which is called uh, Hololink. I have my smartphone here. And when I open up the camera, oh yeah, by the way, this is my audience. <laughs> if you wanna get like a behind the scenes kind of look. Um, so um, here I have an, an image that I would like to augment. And this is a picture of a car because normally we would sell to to marketing agencies. Um, so this is the thing I want to augment. But think of this, this could also be a, an album cover or a poster uh, for a concert or uh, something that you can send in an email. Uh, like 
essentially any kind of 2D image you can augment uh, with this tool. So you see it, it's already read the, the QR code. And if I click up here, I can open the experience uh, in my browser. This is using Safari, which is uh, oh, the, the built-in browser on iPhones. And I click Allow Camera Access. And then in just a sec, it opens the camera within the browser. So you can see it, it's looking for the image. And then when I point uh, here, uh, the car pops up. And now I can like, interact with the car. I can see it in uh, blue color. I can go back. Maybe you get the white color to work. Yeah, I can see it in white as well. Maybe I can change the tires down here. Uh, yeah, I can see the tires in white now. And so this is a way that you can like create experiences. And, and uh, like from the get-go, because I don't have a technical background, I wanted to make this very easy. So normally when you want to create augmented reality, you would download like a game engine like Unity and and learn to code and all of that. Uh, and the ne uh, spoiler alert, the next speaker is going to have a lot more about that. <laughs> so what we built at HoloLink is, is it could be like a way to get going. Here you see sort of like the way that the experience I just showed you is created. And this is what we call our storyboard. Um, so you start with something and then the user has some choices and some more choices and they get led to different uh, scenes, we call them. Think of it as like scenes in a, in, a, in a theater play, but just where the audience controls the theater themselves. If I click on the first one, you can see that I can add like uh, uh, 3D objects. We actually, uh, just last week we added that you can add sound, which <laughs> I would guess maybe is relevant to you guys. So you can add, add a soundtrack and, and sound effects and, and voiceovers, and those are going to change when you change the scene. So you, you can like interact with it. So maybe the first scene you have just the drums playing, and then the next scene you would add, add the bass guitar and the singer or something, and then you could like go back and forth in the experience. So all of that you can, you can add, and you can it's like very drag and drop ish. You can add your own interface. Here I've added just like some basic buttons, but you can also add it like icons, um, uh, like any you know PNG image file you can add in here and, and make it do something when the user clicks on it. And you can very easily like go in and, and, and try it out. That is what my company Hololink made. It's very new, so it's definitely not done yet. But this idea of adding things to the real world and letting the user interact with it is, uh, I, would, I would call it a, a medium, just like music is a medium and video and film and, and all of those things. And, and I see augmented reality as being a completely new medium. Uh, and of course, any new medium needs artists. Uh, they need people who uh, can challenge what you can do with this medium, reinvent it. We haven't launched the software in a sense where anyone on the internet could just go in and, and get started uh, because there's still a lot of things that we want to change. And the way that you change things in software is by asking the users of the software, uh, what would you like? Uh, what part of the platform do you like? What part of is annoying to use? Um, we want this to be the tool for augmented reality, this this new medium that's really just un unfolding as we speak. Uh, so it's, it's sort of like, uh, I, I see it sort of like uh, creating films in the like 20s, a uh, 100 years ago, like... Uh, when when nobody really knew what this new thing was that you had images that moved and it seemed like it was actual people and like a reflection of the real world um like that's a medium that's been invented on for 
100 years now or something. And, and this might be the next. More questions? Yeah, there's actually another one coming up, and you're more technical than I am, so I hope that you understand the question. Okay. Is, is the software comfortable with FBX files that include animations? So can you do animations in the software? How do you work with that? Or is it only to the images for now? Yeah. So FBX is a, f a file format that uh, takes up a, a lot of space. Uh, um, so we wanted to find a different file format that was more like optimized for this way of delivering experiences on the web. So we chose a file format called uh, GLB, which is it's sort of like the JPEG of 3D on the web. Um, and yes, it does support animations. It supports textures, shaders, essentially all of the things you know from the FBX files, uh, but it just takes up less space and is easier to deal with because you have the textures and everything in the same file instead of having it externally. Could you maybe show a little bit about how do you work with the, the 3 d models mm -hmm. what the, or the animations in the software? Yeah. So essentially uh, creating the 3D models and animating them you would st still do in your software of choice. You can also find a lot of 3D models on the internet. Sketchfab, spelled like this, is a great resource. Google Poly, too. Poly has a lot of low po poly files, which essentially means they're smaller, uh, so it takes less time to load on the augmented website. Okay, so here we have um, a guy uh, who's a bit sad. Um, so this is a, a 3D model um, that I've, uh, I think it's made in, in Maya, and then it's been, um, it's been animated in there. Uh, and so what you would do in our platform is simply like author it. See it as, like in a video world, you would have a camera where you capture it, and then you would have an editing program where, we, where you put it all together. So HoloLink is the editing program. It's not where you uh, create the video, in this case, the 3D. Uh, so what you can do in HoloLink is just like move it around. Uh, you can make it smaller or bigger. Of course, you don't want it to be so big that the user needs to go back like a lot from the image because it's pointing outwards. Uh, you could also uh, make it sort of like lay down. Oh, maybe the other way around, like this, and and maybe this guy would be, let's make him a bit smaller. There we go, and maybe move him down. Oh, he's <laughs> going into the image now, like behind the image. Um, so that's the way you, that you like move him around, and then you can uh, like add your your soundtrack as well, and then you have all of your, your different scenes that the, the user would go through. I just have a, a short question. If mm -hmm. you, right now you, you deem it, uh, you have the QR code and then you have the picture. Mm -hmm. So is it always necessary with a picture to like align the images or could you like print a lot of QR codes and put them around in Copenhagen and like distribute your art throughout uh, like the city and then if everybody having a phone they can just scan the QR code and it will pop up or like how how does it react does it need the photo and uh, and how can you do work with that yeah great question so the the AI experience lives on top of the image um, so f think of it as like the the image could be uh, your album cover it could be like postcards it could be just something you s send out in, in emails. Um, and then also remember that because this is pretty flexible to, to work with, uh, you, can, you can change what's in the experience afterwards. Uh, so this would mean I'm releasing an album. There's an album cover. Uh, maybe on the first day, uh, there's uh, just the first part of the song that the users can like uh, like interact with uh, in in ways where they could maybe explore like this is the drum part, this is the guitar part, um, and 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 then on the second day you could go in, 
change something up within the software and then write on your Instagram like, hey guys, uh, I just changed everything about the experience that's on my album cover. Uh, go have a look. And in, in that way, you can you can sort of take like real physical dead things and make them alive uh, using uh, like this digital tools. So think of it as like a way to transcend the analog real world with the digital world. Uh, yeah, I'm just thinking about. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think it could be. Could cool to try try out uh, this hollow link thing that you're working on i've also been like playing around with the reality composer app on the iphone which is like the, like they have their own uh, uh yeah ar uh, development tool um but yeah i was wondering to what 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 other of like what are the benefits of using uh, hololink the main benefit of hololink versus reality composer is in distribution so with reality composer uh, you would only be able to open it on certain iPhones and then there's another question from Uwe yeah. who's asking if you can animate the soundtrack as well for instance so it makes the feeling of that you're like moving uh, closer or farther away from the sound source as of now uh, audio control is is very limited it's essentially sort of like an, an on-off thing uh, so when the image is tracked it plays the audio file linked to that scene I have two scenes here yeah and in this scene I would have an audio file when the image, which is the same for all of the scenes, when the image is tracked, it plays audio. If you're in this scene, it will play the audio of that file. If you're in this scene, it will play the audio of the other one. And we don't have like a, a timeline yet. You know, uh, being a drummer, listening to people changing scenes when it's not on the beat <laughs> is uh, quenching my soul. But <laughs> we, we don't have it. Uh, something like that yet um, and I'm, I'm not sure we're going to develop it but as I said like the main purpose of, of this stage where we are now is to gather as much feedback as possible so what you're saying is that you don't have a timeline right now so it's not possible to make the scenes change by themselves you the user have to interact with them mm-hmm. okay yeah yeah so you need to create some suspense about around your buttons to get people to click on them. <laughs> it's Elva who's asking. I worked with the VR experiences for museums, and our problem with the AR has always been that it's not that immersive. It's not immersive enough for small smartphone screens, mm. uh, and it will not be widely adopted uh, until AR uh, is available to some sort of glasses or contact lenses. Do you have any thought about that issue that it's not immersive enough? First of all, I totally agree. Uh, AR glasses or AR contact lenses is going to be super cool whenever that comes. Second, you know, anyone who's ever read a book is usually like the field of view is like this or something. And I think most people would agree that reading a book is very immersive. Uh, you you get into the world and you imagine all the characters and all of that so i can see from a technical perspective that immersiveness could be about technology but also being i would say at least sort of an artist (laughs) uh, i would also argue that immersiveness and the feeling of of being engaged in something is not about technology at all Uh, like if, if you looked at like people created uh, music when they had way less technology than we have now. And some would say that it's, e- it's even better. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I totally buy that when we have cheap AR glasses that everyone is wearing all the time uh, and we can create experience for that, that is going to be great. Uh, but I also think that there's a huge opportunity in in linking this sort of like individual uh, 
private world that everyone is experiencing on their smartphones, linking that to the real world that we are all sharing. Uh, so think of, of this as sort of like your peak hole into, in, and, and, and not your like glasses where you really entered. Think of it as like a small peak hole. And we actually also created an experience for, for a museum uh, f- or it was for Charlottenborg uh, in, in Kongsnutso for Copenhagen Ducks Festival uh, last year. Uh, and there we created, we, we, we used the limits of our technology to our advantage. And I think that's something you, you really need to do with technology uh, in general. Um, so uh, the limitation was that we, we could only use, uh, back, back then, we could only use, uh, we could only augment things that has sort of like a black border. So we thought, okay, with some storytelling on top, it sort of looks like a cryptic message from an artificial intelligence. Uh, so we use that to our advantage by saying, okay, so then that's going to be the story. The story is going to be that it's some secret artificial intelligence that you would normally not be able to communicate with, but by using this peak hole, which is your smartphone, uh, you can translate these cryptic messages uh, into something that you can understand. And you can even interact with the secret artificial intelligence through this. Um, so uh, we created, like, there was, I think there was eight small markers that the users had to find uh, in order to f- figure out what this weird artif- artificial intelligence wanted. And you also got into some very hectic, hectic, uh, like philosophic questions with it around like life and technology and art and all of that. There's another question from uh, Maya here, who is asking if you have ever tried to make a music video experience uh, with this tool, or maybe another AR, if not with Hololink, uh, maybe another thing with AR, uh, where they are working with music videos um, to use it as an, uh, a tool for for release. Yeah, uh, I was actually for um, you. Maybe you guys know the Danish band uh, Go Go Berlin. Uh, they released a single called Here Comes the Darkness in the spring last year, I think around April or March or May or something. Um, so I knew the uh, director of the music video uh, who uh, f- filmed the band playing with something called volumetric video where you essentially essentially all of the pixels have... Uh, it, it, it doesn't just exist in 2D, it exists in 3D. So he had all of that data, and we were like, let's do something with that. So what we did was we actually took this data of uh, the pixels of the band playing and tried to put that into an app so you could essentially have the band play in your living room uh, in, in this stylized way that was fitting the whole universe around that single. Um, we ran into the problem that we couldn't get the app to run on iPhones and we couldn't get it into the app store. So the project completely died, but it was really interesting to, to work on. And I think now that uh, if, if you use something like Hololink, you, you can focus on the creative part and not the technology because uh, essentially all technology is boring without uh, creativity. Do you have any final uh, thoughts, Lucas, about this? Uh, no, I'm, I'm really excited to see what you guys are going to make. <laughs> uh, essentially, I, I started this journey and created this tool because I wanted to, it sounds cheesy, but to empower people uh, to to uh, like take a deep dive into this world of new mediums that I've been spending the last couple of years on uh, because without... Uh, artists without creatives, whether those are in uh, working for an ad agency, whether they are teachers in a classroom, or whether they are just trying to get more people to uh, 
to see their new album uh, by using some technology that's gonna make their views on Instagram or something pop up. Uh, like uh, across all of those things, um, any technology is not gonna be turned into a medium without creators and uh, that's you guys. So I hope you're gonna create something. <laughs> yes, that's it. Thank you so much, Lucas.